Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We are going to start off our webinar series on praying tarawih at home. And to start us off, Imam Abdul Nasir is going to give us a little bit of information. Huh? You can hear me now? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam Wa ala ashrafil anbiya Wal mursaleen Sayyidina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Welcome to this first session Of our program About how to pray tarawih at home I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you, your family, and your loved ones are in the best state of health and iman. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us, to protect you, your family, your loved ones from this virus, and to protect all humanity from this virus. <clears throat> As you know, the month of Ramadan is fast approaching. It is expected to be here on Friday, April the 24th, insha'Allah. Given the fact that the masajid are closed, many of us are wondering how we are going to pray tarawih in these conditions. This series of five sessions starting from today until Friday is designed to help you understand what is the origin of Taraweeh, how it got its name, and when it was started. We will have, inshallah, five sessions, and we will address all the questions that you might have about Salat Taraweeh. How can we pray at home since the masajid are not open? Today's session is only an introduction. And we will not be talking much about Taraweeh, but we will talk about the ease of our deen and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy to practice the religion of Islam. Can you give us some more information about how does Allah Azza wa Jalla make it easy for us to worship him? There are many ways that we can show that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this deen easy for us to practice. But before we get to that, let me talk a little bit about the situation that we are in. The stay at home orders from different authorities and government officials. You can look at this situation that we are in with this pandemic and feel a sense of helplessness and a sense of despair. Or you can think of it as an opportunity to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to get close to our family and our loved ones. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ni'matani Translation of this hadith is two blessings many people are at a loss in health and free time. What does this hadith mean? Ni'matani, two blessings, the blessing of health and the blessing of free time. Many of us do not take advantage of these. We do not seize this opportunity to do something beneficial for us and for our families. It is only when we lose them that we wish we could go back and 
do a better job. Take advantage of these two blessings. So these days, with many businesses closed, many people working from home, we should benefit from the extra time that we have available for us. Now, going back to your question about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make things easy for us to practice, to worship him. The Prophet wasallam said, inna deen yusr, that this deen is easy. It is easy to practice. It is easy to do the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to do. And in the Quran, we find many evidence and many proofs of that. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, مَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرَجْ Surah Al-Hajj, Al-Ayah, 78. Translation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He laid upon you no hardship in the deen, in the religion. Everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us to do in terms of praying, fasting, zakat, hajj, and all the other rituals and the aspects of our deen, they are easy for us to do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said also in Surah Al-Baqarah, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intends ease for you and he does not intend hardship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes e things easy for us. How can we see that in some of the examples? Every act of worship that we have, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us different options and different of opportunities. So for example, Let's say Ramadan is coming, and let's take an example from the month of Ramadan. Maybe uh, you are sick one day. Maybe you are traveling one day. Traveling and being sick are already a hardship by themselves. So if you are going to fast on these days, that's an extra hardship that you are wearing. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَمَنْ كَانَ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ But if you are sick or traveling, then you can make up those days later on. Salat. How does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us? If it is raining, we have the option to combine. If we are traveling, we have the option to combine and shorten. Salat al-Dhuhr, four rak'ah becomes two rak'ah. Salat al-Asr, four rak'ah becomes two rak'ah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already, the actions that he asks from us are easy, but he makes it even easier during certain times, times of hardship and, and difficulty. So these are some of the ways Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes this deen easy for us to practice. Next question. Jazakumullah khairin. The you? next question is about how does Allah azza wa jalla make it easy for us to get good deeds in Ramadan specifically? Alhamdulillah, that's an excellent question. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the year he makes it easy for us to get good deeds, to get hasanat. If you do one good deed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will multiply it for you at least 10 times. Al hasanatu bi ashri amthaliha. One good deed will be rewarded tenfold. 
in surah al-baqarah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the example of charity of sadaqa mathalu alladhina yunfiquna amwalahum fi sabili allah ka mathali habbatin anbatat sab'a sanabila fi kulli sunbulatin mi'atu habba والله يضاعف لمن يشاء والله واسع عليم the example of those who stand of their wealth for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like a grain or a piece of corn that you put in the ground and a plant comes out and seven ears come out which with each year ear having 100 pieces of grain or corn in it so one piece is multiplied 700 times wallahu yudha'ifu liman yasha is that the maximum that you can get no allah will increase even more than that to whomever he pleases so this is how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the opportunity to earn so many rewards also all our actions are not necessarily good deeds we are humans we make mistakes but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes that into account idha hamma al mar'u bi hasanatin fa amilaha fa lahu 10 amthalihah if you think about a good deed and you do it then you will be rewarded 10 times minimum واذا هم بالسيئه ولم يعملها فتكتب له حسنه if you think about doing a bad deed but you don't do it it will be counted for you as one good deed واذا هم بالسيئه فعملها فتكتب له سيئه واحده but if he thinks about a bad deed and he does the bad deed it will only be counted as one so you do a good deed it is multiplied at least 10 times you do a bad deed it will only be counted as one bad deed that's how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful towards his servant and give us many opportunities now specifically about the month of ramadan we have in the example of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uswatun hasana a great example kana rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam ajwad an-nas the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the most generous of all people wa kana ajwad ma yakun fi ramadan and he was even more generous in ramadan حين ياتيه جبريل عليه السلام وان جبريل عليه السلام كاين تو هيم سو ان رمضان ذا بروفيت صلى الله عليه وسلم انكريست هيز جينيروسيتي بيكيم ايفن مور جينيروس اند ذا مانث اوف رمضان اوف كورس از فول اوف بليسينج فروم ذا بيجينينج تو ذا اند ذا اكشنز ذا جود ديز ان رمضان ار ملتيبلايد more than during other times and fasting and praying at night are highly rewarded by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the qudi in the hadith qudusi allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that all the actions of the son of adam are for him except for fasting illa sawm fa innahu li wa ana ujzibi prayer is for us charity is for us but fasting is for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is the only one who knows how much to reward for it and the reason for that of course is because fasting the only one that knows for sure that you are fasting is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala people can think that you are fasting but you can go hide in your closet and cheat and nobody knows except allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that's why the reward is only known to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us about the benefits of fasting qala sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
man sama ramadana imanan wa ihtisaban ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbi whoever fasts ramadan believing in it and seeking the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all his previous sins will be wiped out erased forgiven so fasting during the day means a purifying and a cleansing from our sins from our bad deeds وَمَنْ قَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ دَنْبِهِ Similarly, praying at night, قِيَامُ اللَّيْلِ تَهَجُّدْ Praying at night in Ramadan. Whoever does this, believing in it and seeking reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will have all his previous deeds or she will have all her previous deeds wiped out and erased and forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What else is there in this glorious holy month of Ramadan? Of course, we cannot fail to mention Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadr khayrun min alfi shahr. Praying and fasting and Qiyamul Layl, as the Prophet ﷺ told us in this magnificent night, is also a reason for having all our bad deeds, past, previous bad deeds, wiped out and erased. Man qama laylatal qadri imanan wahtisaban ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dambih. Whoever Praise Qiyamul Layl, Taraweeh, Tahajjud in this night of Laylatul Qadr. He will have all his previous sins forgiven. And to add to this, that the Prophet, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept this night hidden from us so that we increase our seeking this night. It could be on the 21st, on the 23rd, on the 25th, on the 27th, on the 29th of Ramadan. So that we don't just shoot for one night and say, oh, I'm just going to do the 27. And no, we try everything in our ability to get this night and we get the reward for all the other nights at the same time. So these are some of the um, ways that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases our reward, our good deeds in Ramadan and throughout the year. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who take advantage of these nafahat, these opportunities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Naam. Jazakumullah khairin. I don't have any more questions. Um, and just to to conclude this session, inshallah, um, and a note on these sessions, we intend them to be, inshallah, between 15 to 20 minutes, after which the participants or the attendees can ask any questions that they might have. Um, and so you guys can start asking questions. In the meantime, let me give you a heads up on the upcoming topics for the rest of the four days, inshallah. So tomorrow we will be discussing Qiyam and its benefits and virtues as well as talking about the Prophet Sallallahu example of how he used to pray Qiyamul Layl and getting some ideas from there in terms of what is allowed and what's not allowed, how do we pray at home and so on. This is the beginning of that topic. On Wednesday, we will be covering how the Sahaba, عنهم, how they prayed. What was it? What was their worship look like? What did their worship look like in the middle of the night and so on? After that, on Thursday, we will be covering where did the Raweeh originate from? Going from the Sahaba Radilanhum praying individually. Going in from there into specifically in Ramadan, how did they pray? And where did the Raweeh come? Was it from the very beginning? Was it something that happened later on? How many prayers, how many Rakahat did they pray? Did they pray eight? Did they pray 20? Did they pray 36, 39? What, what's the number and how, what was the history behind it? And what are the lessons from there that we can use in our particular context when we're praying at home, inshallah? And then the last 
session on Friday, we'll be giving you specific guidelines on what exactly that you can do and what you can do in terms of facilitating for your families and so on, inshallah, as well as going into a little bit of detail about the fiqh of prayer because you're going to be leading salah and so on and you should know about how to pray, what happens if you make mistakes, how to correct them, uh, all of those details, inshallah, will be covered then. And then you can ask throughout any questions, inshallah, that you might have. So again, this is the conclusion of today's session. Now we're going to leave it open for anyone that has any questions about the topic that Imam Abdul Nasir spoke about today and anything that you might have that is going to be covered in the future. We'll, we'll make a note of that, inshallah. So this is open for all the attendees to ask any questions they might have. You can ask in the chat or in the uh, Q&A. So Imam Abdul Nasir, um, we're going to give them a few minutes, inshallah, to ask any questions they might have. If we don't get any questions in the next three, four, five minutes, uh, we'll go ahead and conclude. And that'll be it, inshallah. Inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. Okay, uh, there's a question. Um, we didn't we didn't cover this. Um, we may cover this later on, but I think we can, maybe Imam Abdul Nasser wants to um, touch base on this now, or you can mention if we're going to be discussing this later on, inshallah. The question is, some say we pray tarawih behind the imam remotely. Is this permissible? Like via computer or something like that? Okay. Uh, this is called the virtual uh, and our uh, scholars have uh, issued their opinion that this is not permissible. It is not permissible to pray Jumu'ah, one of the five daily prayers, or any other prayer behind an imam remotely while on, you know, watching him on online or you know, through social media. So no, we cannot do that. We cannot. You can listen to him or her, the, the, the prayer, but you cannot pray behind him, you know, like you were in the masjid. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. So for example, if they were listening to, like last year or the years before, um, what was broadcast from the Haramain, then that would be okay, but they wouldn't be able to join them or anywhere else as long as it's not in person. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. And your Imam loves you back. Allah reward you. Thank you very much. <laughs> are you muted right now? That's what there's one comment says you are muted. Okay, there was a question. Uh, can we, uh, if we don't have Quran memorized, are we going to be able to, um, how, how, we do we, how do we pray eight rakat? And inshallah, we will cover this on Wednesday when we discuss how this Habar Dilanham used to pray and get some of the proofs from them. Also on Friday. And also on Friday, inshallah, yes. So <clears throat> we're going to start off on, uh, on this particular question. 
how do we pray if we don't have surahs memorized? Can we read short surahs, for example? This is one of those things that inshallah we'll, we'll go over from Wednesday onwards, uh, especially uh, Wednesday and Friday. The next question was, can we play Quran on our mobile phone and pray tarawih at home with the phone? So the, the Quran is being played and you're just following along? Um, Imam Abdel Nasser, do you want to answer that? Again, this is something, something similar to uh, virtual uh, you know, prayer. And uh, the ajr is, you get the ajr by, by reciting. You get the ajr by reciting the Quran yourself. With every letter that you recite, you will get one hasana. It is not so with listening. So, no, you should not listen to the Quran on your uh, you know, iPhone or what have you, and pray with that recitation. You have to pray with the recitation of a human being. Lie. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. Jazakumullah khair. The next question, do we get reward even if we read Quran without understanding the meaning in Arabic? Yes, of course. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that when, if you read Alif Bamim, you will get 10 hasanat for each letter. Alif 10, Lam 10, Mim 10. We don't know what they mean. Even Arabs, they don't know what Alif Lam Mim means. So yes, you can get, you get, you get reward even if you do not understand the meanings of the what you are reading because the, uh, the 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 taklif is to read of course we should try to understand but the fact that you don't understand is not going to lessen your reward inshallah ta'ala next <clears throat> and the word taklif that you use for a mukallif can you um just explain to them if they don't understand what it means لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Allah does not put any burden on a person that cannot. So a taklif is what Allah subhanahu wa taala has commanded us to do. We are mukallafin. Allah subhanahu wa taala, He commanded us to pray. He commanded us to fast. He commanded us to go to Hajj. He commanded. Us. So those are, you know, commands that Allah subhanahu wa taala. And we are mukallafin. We are asked to perform these actions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed for us. The next question is, in case the lockdown is over by the middle of Ramadan, are we going to have tarawih at the masjid? Insha'Allah ta'ala, that will be a great news. Uh, it looks like this thing is going to go on for a while, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, nothing is impossible for him. Uh, just like this uh, virus came suddenly, it could it could go it could disappear suddenly. Allahu uh, ala kulli shayin qadir. We always pray. Oh Allah, remove this pandemic from us. Oh Allah, remove this virus from us. So if it if it if it does go away uh, by the middle of Ramadan or even before by the beginning of the month of May, inshallah we are ready to open the masjid and to start the taraweeh. Uh, we have, uh, you know, everything was planned uh, to, to, to start uh, on time, but, you know, قَدَّرَ اللَّهُ مَا This is the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we obey, and we respect that. But if the opportunity is there for us to, to start praying the good taraweeh together, alhamdulillah, we will jump on that occasion. Okay, another question was, will Imam Saf uh, do Taraweeh online, either streaming or on webinar? This would be great. I understand webinar cannot be for a long time. I think we already answered that question that uh, live streaming for Taraweeh cannot happen. Uh, but if you can answer, if you, if you want to add on anything to it, Imam. Again, I just want to make it clear that you can live stream, somebody can pray at home uh, Taraweeh and live stream it, but you... As a Muslim, you cannot follow that person who is praying at home on your TV or your laptop or your iPad or your iPhone or whatever the, 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 that you have. 
and follow them, pray behind them virtually. You cannot do that. The scholars have issued their opinion and their fatwa about that. But if you want to listen to somebody who is praying, Alhamdulillah, there is no problem with that. So you can watch them praying, but you cannot join them in praying virtually. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. exactly. The next question is, uh, are the local masajid following a unified decision for the first day of Ramadan this year? Yes, we are uh, following the agreement that we made last year. That's why we said that, inshallah ta'ala, Ramadan will begin uh, April the 24th, Friday. And we should start our Taraweeh prayers on Thursday night after Salat al-Isha. And we will give more details about that, inshallah, uh, on, on, in the Friday session, bi-idhnillah ta'ala. The next question, how many rakat should I pray during Ramadan? Any specific timing I should know? This is something that we will cover, inshallah, coming up tomorrow. We will talk about how the Prophet Sallallahu prayed. Then the day after that, on Wednesday, we will discuss how the Sahaba whom followed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and how they prayed. And then we will continue onwards into how that we started and how many rakat were instituted and how they were flexible and so on. And then on Friday, specifically, we will give you instructions from all of this in terms of how you can pray at home. The next question is, normally we complete the whole Quran during the Ramadan Taraweeh in the Masjid. If one knows only 15 to 20 surahs, would it be okay for a person to recite the same surahs in everyday Taraweeh? Um, this is also going to be covered, inshallah. I will let Imam Abdul Nasir decide if he wants to answer or wait until later. Inshallah, we will cover this uh, this question uh, throughout the, the series and Definitely uh, on Friday, we will, we will talk about that in more details. Okay. Here's another one. Can we perform taraweeh by reading Quran from the mobile phone? Um, this is going to be covered, inshallah, on Wednesday when we talk about how the Sahaba radiallahu used to pray um, and some of the proofs from Maha Aisha radiallahu and so on. Um, and so, inshallah, we will cover that then. But if I'm, if I'm Abdul Nasir wants to add something. I think you did the right thing, yes. Okay. Let's see. Any other questions? I don't see any more questions here. Um, I will wait a few more minutes, inshallah, to see if anybody has any questions. If we missed any questions, please let us know also. Okay, another question. Can we read? Can we see the mushaf and read from it while praying tarawih? This is the same thing as the one before about uh, using the phone. It's in the same uh, category of things. So inshallah, when we get there, uh, starting on Wednesday, then th this answer will be discussed as well. Inshallah. So if you, as you guys might be typing more questions, let me go ahead and review one more time. Uh, just a summary of what we're going to be talking about in the next coming days. On uh, on Tuesday, tomorrow, we're going to go into the description of some of the benefits and virtues of praying Qiyam al-Layl, what's the difference between Qiyam and Tahajjud and so on, uh, what time is good to pray um, and so on. We will also talk about how the Prophet Sallallahu himself prayed, how many rak'ah did he pray and so what did he say about praying Qiyam al-Layl and so on. On Wednesday, we will talk about how the Sahaba, how they applied whatever the Prophet did in their own lives. And then on Thursday, we will talk about how Taraweeh started off in the time of Umar, I'm giving you a little bit of a heads up, how it started, how the Sahaba, uh, they followed the Prophet in this because the Prophet did pray um, and how the Sahaba did join him sometimes. So we will discuss all those, inshallah. Um, and we will discuss how many rakah did they pray first, how many, you know, what changes are we made, how many are we supposed to pray, what can we do, what's our, what's our, uh, what's our flexibility in this matter. And then, inshallah, on Thursday, we will go, uh, on Friday, we will go into details in terms of guidelines for people that are going to be praying at home. What do you need to know? How many rakah do you pray? How do you, how do you, how long should you make everything? Can you read from the mushaf? Can you not read from the mushaf? All those things we will discuss, inshallah, on Friday, as well as some fiqh issues, as if you make a mistake, how do you correct it, and so on, inshallah.
One of the comments is, many thanks for your reply and explanation. Jazakumullah khair. Barakallahu fikum. We hope that it's been helpful. And a note over here. Every day, you just need to join the same exact link that you joined with today. And again, inshallah, we, we intend to keep these 15 to 20 minutes of content, after which we'll answer any questions that people have. So tomorrow and the days after, just use the same link that you used today to join. And we are recording this. So this will be available, inshallah. And, and you'll find it somewhere on ICM. ICM will give you an alert in, in terms of where you can find the recordings as well, inshallah. So we'll give one more minute, inshallah, if, there, if there's any questions that come in in the next minute. Um, otherwise, we'll go ahead and conclude, inshallah. One of the panel, uh, one of them, uh, one of the comments, Jazakumullah khair for hosting these sessions, alhamdulillah. It's very, alhamdulillah, this is good to hear. Barakallahu fikum. Here's another question. Oh, it's a comment. Jazakumullah khair, imam and panel. Barakallahu fikum. Okay, so it looks like there's no more questions. And if there are any more questions, you guys can always uh, wait until the next session, or you can email Imam Abdul Nasir directly, and he can answer any questions, inshallah, as well. And inshallah. Okay, there's a question. We are not praying Jum'ah with Jum'ah, but we need, we have... Uh, I didn't understand that question. We are not praying Juma with Juma, but we have wave. We have wave. Is there for not praying how to handle the situation? Could you rephrase that question? Waid, is that what it is? We are not praying Juma with Juma, but we have. Imam Abdul Nasser, if you click on the Q&A button, uh, button next to where the share button is, mm -hmm. uh, if you click on that, there's a question that says, if you can read the question, I'm not understanding the question. Okay, one second. We are not playing Juma with Jama, but we have Waid is there for not playing how to handle this situation. Hmm. If I understand this correctly, Wa'id, like a threat. Okay. So, whenever there is a reason for not doing something commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will not be held accountable for that. So if somebody forces you to say kalimatul kufr, say something that will take you out of Islam, you are not going to be taken out of Islam because you were doing this under duress by force just like it happened during the time of the Prophet Here in this case, we are not leaving Jum'ah and Jama'ah because we want to. We are leaving them due to the situation that we are in. It is greater harm to have Jama'ah and Jum'ah and to have everybody infected and to have many people die So we have a rukhsa, we have a permission not to hold jama'ah or jumu'ah due to the fact that, you know, the conditions are on, in the ground, on the ground do not allow us to do that. So there is no punishment, there is no uh, wa'id for not being able to hold jama'ah and jumu'ah. Wallahu ta'ala alam, this is if I understand the question properly. So just to clarify, um... The question was asked if there is fear um, of 
some sort of some concern, some fear. Imam Abdul Nasser asked her about having rukhas in, in terms of concessions that we have in terms of not having to do certain things that we would otherwise be required to do or making adjustments according to the need. It looks like there's no more questions, so we'll go ahead and conclude, inshallah. If she can conclude. Okay. Jazakumullahu khair for your participation. We really appreciate it. If you think this uh, session was beneficial, uh, please spread the word and let, let your uh, friends and families and relatives know about it so that maybe tomorrow, inshallah, more people will, will join us. In the meantime, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us, to protect uh, the Muslim community and to protect humanity at large. There one more question. Okay. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim wa al-Asr. Inna al-insana la fi khusr. Illa al-ladhina amanu wa amilu al-salihati wa tawasaw bil-haqq wa tawasaw bil-sabr. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته